Hey there lovely teachers, we've just released a fabulous new collection, concept collection number three, all about enharmonics. So I thought I would talk to you a little bit about how I introduce enharmonics to my students because they can be a bit confusing. I like to introduce these right when I'm first introducing flats and sharps at all to my students. So that's normally when they've been with me, I don't know, a year, year and a half, something like that. Depends on how they progress through reading material and other stuff. I like to start by introducing these things on the piano. So I explain that a sharp makes you go one key higher, a flat one key lower. And we do it like this on the piano with my little erasers. So first I ask my student to find me an F. Great, F sharp is one key higher. So I tell them to move this, this little guy, he's a koala, to F sharp. Now some students will do that right away. Some will go to there and we'll talk about how the keys are all in a row and it's best to look at the back of the keys so we can see which order they're in. So they move that to F sharp. We do a few more like this, place this guy on B, move it to B flat, etc. Okay, then after we've done this a few times and I think they're getting it, I say, okay, now put them on E. So move them to E sharp. And they might do this and then go, oh, but that's F sharp. And we figure out that white keys can be sharps and C flat, white keys can be flat too. Okay, so we solve that one puzzle and then straight away I deal with enharmonics as well. So I say, okay, put this on G sharp. And then I say, put this one on A flat. And they figure out, oh, that's the same thing. So we do a few more examples like that and I'll do this for a few lessons in a row. Now, once we've reinforced that and they're starting to see pieces with these things, we keep the conversation flowing. And when a piece comes up where an accidental is used, we talk about why is it a sharp and not a flat? And we carry that conversation through to their scales as well. Why, when we're doing F major, did we call it B flat instead of A sharp? So we start to figure out why we have these two symbols in the first place and two different names for every key. So that's the basic idea of enharmonics. Now I'm not too fussed if they know the word right away, we start to introduce that gradually, but it does need more reinforcement. And that's where these pieces are gonna come in. So Concept Collection 3 is now available. If you haven't come across these collections before, they're limited edition. So we only release them for two months at a time. This one right now is live as I'm releasing this video. So that's August, 2023 to September, 2023. If you're watching this later, we may have a different collection live at the moment. So it's worth checking the shop, which is colorfulkeys.ie slash shop. That's where you can buy hard copies of any current concept collections that we have out, including this one right now. Members of Vibrant Music Teaching also get access to the di digital studio license of this. So if you're a member during this time and you download that file and save it somewhere safe, you never have to worry about not having that collection ever again. As long as you save that file somewhere nice and safe and make sure you've got it because we can't give it to you later, only during those two months. So if you want the studio license, the membership is the place to go and members and non-members alike can buy a hard copy in the Colorful Keys shop. So we have four fabulous composers in this collection. We have Angeline Bell, Agnieszka Bialek, Heather Hammond and Alva McDonough. Alva, by the way, is an Irish name, so that's how you pronounce it. It's a BH, which is a V, like a V sound in Irish. Okay, so these four fabulous composers have composed two pieces each for this collection. Let me show you about a couple of them. So in our concept collections, we have notes about the composers and we have piece notes from the composers themselves, which I always love having for my students. The first piece in the book is just fabulous. It has words. So Alva McDonough wrote this one and the words go, sharps go up, flats go down. Now the line is falling down. Sharps go up, flats go down. Now the line turns upside down. Isn't that clever? So great little words, great for reinforcing. If you get your students singing that over and over while you play it and then learning the piece and singing along with their own playing, I think you will have drilled the idea of sharps and flats and along the way with the reading of it and harmonics um, and your students will never forget. 
Now concept collection pieces go from beginner through to intermediate level um, and we put them in rough order of difficulty in the book but of course every student is different. This one is a totally different mood to the others, I just wanted to give you a sense of it with the start, it goes... So it's absolutely gorgeous. It's called Amelia, you can listen to samples of these on the site as well. And not to play favourites, but this one is also by Angeline Bell, like Amelia was, and I just think it's so groovy. So this is the main theme that goes through in the left hand. Isn't that fun? It is so fun to listen to, it's so fun to play, you have to check it out, it's absolutely awesome. That is called The Plot Thickens. I hope that gave you a sense of how to teach enharmonics as well as a place you can find fabulous pieces for reinforcing the concept. If you're looking for more books for your students, I suggest you watch this video next. It's about a wonderful little book called For the Little Birds by Kai Ono.